In the late 70s, amidst the rapidly growing suburban landscape of Marysville, Washington, a chilling tale unfolded on the edges of Spencer Island. This idyllic spot, renowned for its mesmerizing array of shorebirds and waterfowl, became the unlikely setting for an incident that would forever grip the community. Hi, and welcome back to Crime Case Files. Before we dive deep into Gary Lee Haney's case, we would like to extend our most sincere condolences to him and his family and friends. We approach this investigation with the utmost respect and empathy for the tragedy they have endured. It was the crisp morning of January 3rd, 1979, a week marked by below zero temperatures. In the midst of this frigid winter, a duck hunter ventured into the desolate abyss, desperate for a catch. Little did he know, fate had a different surprise in store. Emerging from the depths, he saw something that almost looked unreal. Before his disbelieving eyes materialized a ghastly sight, a skeleton clad in a checkered shirt, eerily reminiscent of a Halloween decoration. Tragically ensnared in a tangled web of fishing line, this ghoul-like figure haunted the desolate tide flats of Spencer Island. A peculiar ensemble of items lay scattered nearby. A shoe, a leg bone, a tan pair of pants, and, most shockingly, a human skull with a foot still inside a black leather shoe. This scene was nothing short of a bone-chilling mystery waiting to be unraveled. The duck hunter wasted no time and promptly reported his macabre discovery to the authorities. Police officers descended upon the scene, their eyes drawn to the red, orange, grey and white checkered shirt lying nearby. Amidst the eerie tableau lay a human skull and a shoe with a foot still inside. These grotesque details provided vital clues for the identification of the man whose remains now lay exposed to the elements. Furthermore, investigators discovered a 33-34 size belt along with a pair of laced shoes size 8. The shoes bore the O'Sullivan logo on their rubber heels. The tag on the washed-out khaki pants read that they were made in the USA. However, there was one chilling detail that sent shivers down the spines of the responding officers. The leather wallet found near the skeletal remains contained no money or identification. It seemed that the owner had been dead for months. As the chilling winds of Spencer Island whispered secrets, the sheriff's office recorded the case as John Doe 79-1. Due to the advanced state of decomposition, the cause of death remained elusive. Furthermore, no dental records proved to be a match. The investigation hit a roadblock, leaving investigators to grapple with the unsettling mystery of John Doe 79-1. A couple of months later, on March 15, 1979, the body of John Doe 79-1 was laid to rest by the Cassidy Funeral Home at Cypress Lawn Cemetery. In those days, without the technology we have today, unidentified corpses were often buried, their stories left untold. As the years passed, the urgency to identify the body gradually waned. John Doe, 79 to 1's case, grew colder and colder, until it was buried in the depths of the collective memory of Snohomish County. Then, in 2008, a team emerged with a mission to re-examine unsolved or unidentified cases in Snohomish County. Advancements in DNA technologies had unlocked new possibilities. The team's goal was to exhume the remains of the deceased, hoping to find a breakthrough using DNA samples. Yet, this process was no swift undertaking. Obtaining permits and conducting extensive testing was a journey that would span several years. In July 2015, the remains were finally exhumed from Cypress Lawn under the authority of the Snohomish County Sheriff's Office and the Medical Examiner's Office. The nameless individual, who had long been forgotten by the world, was reborn as Spencer Island Doe. By the end of July 2015, Dr. Kyle Tanaka, a forensic odontologist, had taken dental radiographs and meticulously charted the unidentified person's teeth. This data was uploaded to the National Crime Information Center, NCIC, and NamUs in hopes of finding a dental match. But the search yielded no results. This enigmatic figure, whose life had been reduced to bones and fragments of a past existence, remained nameless. In April 2016, a ray of hope pierced the cloud of mystery surrounding Spencer Island Doe. Forensic artist Natalie Murray took up the case with a determination to breathe life back into this forgotten soul. With precision and care, Natalie took measurements and photographs of the skeletal remains. Using facial morphology, she embarked on the challenging task of reconstructing the face. Rubber pegs were meticulously attached to the skull to represent the missing parts. In her skilled hands, the face of Spencer Island Doe began to take shape. Natalie visualized 
him at the time of his disappearance, drawing him from the shoulders up, wearing the same red checkered shirt found at the scene. The narrow nose and flat cheeks she reconstructed seemed consistent with people of Asian descent. Each stroke of her pencil, each contour she added, brought the face of John Doe 791 closer to being human again. The sketches and drawings were then made available for public viewing. The hope was that someone, somewhere, would look at these images and recognize the face, leading to the long overdue revelation of his identity. That same month, Dr. Kathy Taylor, a forensic anthropologist at the King County Medical Examiner's Office, conducted a detailed examination of the remains. Her findings shed some light on the mysterious figure. It was determined that the remains likely belonged to a Caucasian adult male standing between 5 feet 2 inches and 5 feet 6 inches tall. The age range was broad, estimated to be anywhere from 21 to 61 years old. Although there were no signs of trauma to the bones, a puzzling detail emerged. A badly healed femur fracture on the leg suggested chronic pain and raised questions about the man's past. The middle third portion of his femur jutted out like the claw of an ice scraper, an abnormality that left investigators perplexed. Had this man endured excruciating pain in silence, or were there other secrets hidden beneath the surface? One of the most intriguing aspects of Spencer Island Doe's case lay within his dental records. The investigation revealed that he was missing two left anterior top teeth and two molars, which appeared to have been lost prior to his death as the sockets had properly healed. Additionally, there was a gap in his teeth and three teeth with alloy fillings, indicating that he had sought out dental care at some point in his life. This revelation left investigators baffled. Why had this man, who clearly sought dental attention, not sought help for his badly healed leg fracture? It was a conundrum that raised more questions than answers. The detectives also considered the possibility that this mysterious figure may have been a prisoner at some point. Inmates have access to dental care, which explained the dental work absurd. Served. However, it still didn't clarify why he had not received urgent medical attention for his leg. A retired officer from the 1970s recalled seeing a man who limped around town during that era but couldn't recall his name. This opened up the possibility of medical records. However, the ambiguity surrounding the man's age proved to be a significant obstacle. He could have been a fisherman and perhaps he had either drowned or his comrades had given him a sea burial. The possibilities were endless and the pieces of the puzzle refused to align neatly. As time marched on, advancements in DNA technology breathed new life into the cold case. In September 2018, a section of the femur was sent to the University of North Texas Health Sciences Center UNTHSC, for DNA extraction. This was a pivotal moment in the investigation, as DNA technology had the potential to unveil the long-held secrets of Spencer Island Doe. Over the course of the next year, from September 2018 to March 2019, the university successfully extracted mitochondrial DNA and STR short tandem repeat images. However, the findings proved proved inconclusive as there were no matches in existing databases. Despite the setback, the investigators remained undeterred. They understood that solving this mystery required perseverance and an unrelenting pursuit of answers. They continued to explore every available avenue. Between 2018 and 2021, the investigators at the Snohomish County Medical Examiner's Office painstakingly eliminated several missing persons as potential matches. They utilized a combination of factors, including circumstances, STR testing, and dental records, to narrow down the possibilities. However, Spencer Island Doe remained elusive, refusing to yield his secrets. In 2021, a new chapter began in the quest to unveil the identity of Spencer Island Doe. Investigators initiated a partnership with Othram Inc., a pioneering company specializing in advanced DNA analysis. Their goal was to create an advanced DNA profile that could be used for investigative genetic genealogy, a cutting-edge approach that had yielded success in other cold cases. The entire project was funded by DNAsolves.com, an organization dedicated to harnessing the power of DNA to solve unsolved cases. This collaboration breathed new life into the investigation, infusing it with the the hope of finally uncovering the truth. In May 2021, a section of the femur was sent to Othram Inc. for DNA extraction. This marked a critical juncture in the case. The DNA obtained was not just any DNA, it was of forensic grade quality. It was the key that could potentially unlock the mysteries that had shrouded Spencer Island Dole for decades. The dedicated team at Othram Inc. worked tirelessly to extract and analyze the DNA. Their efforts bore fruit, and a DNA profile was successfully generated. 
This was a breakthrough moment in the investigation as it brought hope of finally revealing the identity of Spencer Island Doe. The DNA profile confirmed that the individual was Caucasian, providing a valuable piece of the puzzle. However, it was only the beginning of the journey to uncover the truth. The next phase of the investigation involved using the DNA profile for investigative genetic genealogy. This cutting-edge technique allowed investigators to build ancestor trees, seeking potential matches and descendants who could help identify the mysterious figure. As the investigators delved deeper into the world of genealogy, they encountered a breakthrough. They found a male who had gone missing in Everett, Washington in the late 70s. The pieces of the puzzle were starting to come together. It seemed they were on the cusp of unveiling the long-awaited identity. Finally, on February 10, 2023, the chief medical examiner officially announced the identity of Spencer Island Doe. His name was Gary Lee Haney. After 44 years, the cold case was finally laid to rest. Gary Lee Haney's name could now be spoken and his story could be told. Gary Joseph Condomati was born on September 23, 1950, to mother Bernice Schaefer. His early years were marked by a divorce that occurred when he was young. Bernice remarried in 1955 to an Air Force officer named Sheldon Lee Haney, who adopted Gary and legally changed his middle name. Gary's family life allowed him to travel the world, a young man exploring different cultures and landscapes. He had a deep love for the Beatles and was said to be a skilled pianist, able to play with his eyes closed. The boy who once cradled a cocker spaniel puppy named Taffy in old black and white photographs had a life filled with movement and change. However, Gary's life took a tragic turn when his biological father, Joseph Condomati, passed away when he was just 16 years old. Three years later, his mother, Bernice, also left this world. With both of his biological parents gone, Gary's stepfather, Sheldon Lee Haney, became his sole family. Sheldon was a commercial pilot for Boeing and lived in the Everett, Washington area from the early 1970s until at least 1990. His career afforded him a lifestyle akin to that of a migratory bird, often traveling to Baja, California in Mexico during the winters. It appeared that Sheldon didn't have many responsibilities, but the details of Gary's relationship with his stepfather remained shrouded in mystery. Thane, Gary's cousin, who was 71 years old at the time of the investigation, pieced together various memories and information about Gary's life. Thane had kept records of the family that stretched across the country. The photographs of Gary as a young boy cradling a dog's leash or holding a cocker spaniel puppy painted a vivid picture of the life he once lived. As Gary grew older, some records indicated that he resided in a boarding house. However, a puzzling detail emerged. Social security records indicated that he had died on Christmas Eve 1976. This information was questionable, as no living relative had listed him as deceased. It was speculated that perhaps Sheldon and Gary had a falling out, or maybe Gary had decided to strike out on his own. Whatever the case, Sheldon Lee Haney lost track of his adult stepson, and Gary's fate remained a mystery. Despite the intensive investigation, some questions lingered in the air like stubborn shadows. What were the circumstances under which Gary met his demise? The absence of an established cause of death left room for speculation, from drowning to a head injury or an underlying medical condition. Had Gary been a victim of foul play, or did he meet his end through some unfortunate accident, possibly a fatal encounter with the river's unforgiving currents? Moreover, the lack of dental records or other identifiable markers had compounded the mystery. Why had no one recognized Gary or reported him missing? The fracture in his femur would have made him walk with a limp and appear two inches shorter on one side. A retired officer from the 1970s remembered seeing a man who limped around town during that era, but the man's name remained lost to time. This peculiar detail opened up possibilities for medical records, but the age ambiguity posed a significant challenge. Gary could have been a fisherman, and his fate might have been sealed by drowning or an improvised sea burial, a theory that invoked the maritime mysteries of the Pacific Northwest. Finally, after 44 years of twists and turns, breakthroughs and dead ends, the cold case of Spencer Island Doe reached its long-awaited conclusion. Thanks to the relentless pursuit of answers, the skeletal remains had a name, Gary Lee Haney. Born under another name in Topeka, Kansas, Gary's journey had taken him across the country through the embrace of family, the loss of loved ones, and the enigmatic twists of life. 
He had traveled the world, exploring its wonders, and ended up in the quiet landscape of Spencer Island, where his journey ultimately came to an abrupt and mysterious end. Gary Lee Haney's identity was no longer shrouded in obscurity. He had a name, a history, and a family that had searched for him, even if they had lost contact over the years. The story of Spencer Island Doe had come full circle from the chilling discovery on the desolate island to the unveiling of a name four decades later. The case of Gary Lee Haney marked yet another example of investigators using family tree research to crack long unsolved cold cases. In addition to several homicides, forensic genealogy had led to breakthroughs in about a dozen local cases of unidentified remains since 2018. Snohomish County investigators now had only three such cases left to solve in the county. The relentless pursuit of answers in cold cases like Gary's was a testament to the dedication of law enforcement, forensic experts and organizations committed to bringing closure to families and communities. It showcased the power of advanced DNA technologies and the potential of genealogical research to unearth long-buried secrets. As the final pieces of the puzzle fell into place, Gary Lee Haney's story served as a reminder that, even after decades of silence, the truth could still emerge from the depths of mystery, casting light into the darkest corners of the past. The story of Spencer Island Doe had come to an end, but the legacy of Gary Lee Haney would endure a testament to the enduring spirit of investigation and the pursuit of justice.